<laughs> How are you guys? How's your day going? Um, it's going. Yeah, got back at like twelve thirty last night. Slept till like ten. Yeah. We actually actually had to do this like mouth guard thing at the dentist, which was pretty uh, terrible. You had to get a mouth guard. Well, I I kind of just wanted to. I'm just like taking everything. You know what I mean? Really? Oh, typical, I typical it. Just yeah, it on sideline swap yeah. in Jewish fashion, like taking everything for free. Exactly. Uh, but, uh, Is it like that like weird mold when you go to the orthodontist and they're doing your braces? It's kind of worse. Yeah, it's just like oh, that's the worst. Yeah, I don't like, know if you guys realize you're talking to probably the ECHL star of the week right here. Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. I know. I was gonna wear my <laughs> Allen American sweatshirt actually. I don't know if you're talking. You know, you're talking to the birthday boy over here as well. Oh yeah, we, we already said happy birthday. Oh okay. okay. <laughs> <You fucker. laughs> Most of our podcasts are just just raging about feminism, so that's how it's been for the last. It's just yeah. anger. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Just, yeah. How do you guys know each other? We were roommates um one summer when I was down in DC. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy that we were both like interested in the same stuff. So yeah, yeah. and she went to uh, UW Madison. I went to Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and two Jews. Mm -hmm. Work that easy, easy click. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, like they definitely just put us together because our last names are really close. But mm -hmm. like it worked out. Oh yeah, that that, 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 doesn't, that, doesn't, that, doesn't, make, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I literally didn't put that together. So. <laughs> I was just convinced you weren't even gonna show up. I was literally two weeks late. I don't know what I was doing, but weren't you in like London or something? Oh, I was in London. Yeah. You just forgot that you went to London. I studied <laughs> there for a while. <laughs> yeah, Anywho. I I'm curious to hear about you guys. Um, you'll find out pretty quickly that I don't know anything about hockey. Soccer is my oh, sport, really? but I like listening. <laughs> and uh, she also has to deal with me all the time. So, okay. well, that's perfect because I don't know if we know shit about soccer. At least I don't. Do you? I of? love soccer. Oh, you do? Woo! Yeah. I like playing you FIFA. <laughs> yeah, I love FIFA. I've actually been so hooked on FIFA lately. No, but a lot of my friends like from down in Florida just like are obsessed with with soccer. So I'm kind of just I was kind of like forced into that, and then like um when i went to ferris like we were close with a lot of the, the women's uh, soccer team and they were actually pretty good um so yeah what's the so, soccer uh, scene like in texas in texas i have not a single clue <laughs> i haven't seen a single soccer player out on any field i've driven by it's just big in football like the football stadiums up here are nuts it was like a 25 million dollar high school football facility it's it's ridiculous well you For know who's school. from uh wichita falls Best what? U.S. soccer, best woman's U.S. soccer player ever. Mia Hamm was from Wichita Falls. Shut up. Yeah. You, did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, she yeah, was She was like, new every day. she was like the girl soccer player, I feel like, when we were growing up. Like, she was like, um, who, who is it now? Uh, Sue Bird's, like, fiance? What's, I'm, Megan why am I, Yeah, why am I blanking on her name? Megan Rapinoe. Rapinoe. Rapinoe, Rapino, 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 whatever. Yeah. yeah. Rapinoe. <laughs> I do watch. I mean, I've watched. I've watched the girls' soccer just because they're so good. But I'm. Not, I don't like follow. I mean, I couldn't name three players in the men's soccer team. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't either. So <laughs> I definitely only watch the women's national team and then like soccer abroad because mm -hmm. it's not great here. We do have a couple better players, so I think we'll probably make the World Cup this upcoming World Cup. But I would hope so for men's. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't even qualify last time, right? Yeah. It's low-key yeah. so heartbreaking. Like, how, like, it's just like a, you're a U.S. team. You can't find, like, I just, I don't get Actually, it. Actually, they can. It's just, like, they're barely American. But we have, like, Weston McKinney this year and, like, Christian Pulisic, who plays on Chelsea, which is my team. And so. Mm, love that. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Um, I wish he would play better than he is, but it's fine. A bunch of uh, a bunch of my friends went to University of Central Florida, and they have, they got an MLS team right there. I think it's like Orlando yeah. FC or something, and right. they would just go to all the games. It's actually pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing I wish was in like hockey stadiums was like the fan base in soccer, where they're just like like some of the chants they get. Yeah. If they were to chant that in hockey stadiums, that would be electric. You kind of get that I feel like in the sick college like ranks. It definitely yeah. depends. Like I know, yeah. Tommy, you went to Mariucci, like there in Mariucci. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. It's insane. Like I also went though over Christmas break, so it wasn't as sick. We, yeah, but we played on New probably, Year's Eve, so it was like you it know. was still probably crazy enough though. It was cool. It was cool, but it yeah. wasn't. I mean, I thought it would be like I, there. I, there weren't many students. I, I felt like you know. Well, yeah, because they were all home for break, yeah. but. but was, oh, I played at Mariucci as well. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy there. Nuts. Yeah. Did you score though? Did I score? Yeah. 
I didn't even play. I was in the stands. Oh, really? <laughs> Wait, with Theris or with with Theris? Theris. With Theris. Theris in the Dark Ages. In the Dark Ages. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, just... Welcome, everyone, to Sporty Spice. This is our wonderful podcast, and <laughs> we have two very exciting guests today. Rachel, take it away. As Naomi just said, I'm Rachel, but we have our good pals from the locker room, Johnny and Justin. Justin, congratulations on the back-to-back shutouts. Thank you. Incredible. And Johnny, happy birthday. Thank you. Not as cool as, as an accomplishment, but I'll, I'll take it. It's okay. You're just turning a year older. You just went around the sun one more time. Exactly. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. You but- finally made the 25. I'm proud of you, buddy. You're at the quarter-life crisis. <laughs> Damn, I'm sure, am I just ripped apart this whole time or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> future plans. Is that a scary question for people at 25? Future plans? Yeah. Like how um, do you see the rest of your life panning out? Got- well, honestly, I do feel like every birthday after 21 just like fucking sucks. I mean, mm-hmm. Straight down, like, yeah. like, yeah, what do you look like look forward to after 21? I mean, I guess like yeah. you know, I can almost rent a car, which is cool. But uh <laughs> is it no, yeah, but but then again, like I don't know. Me, me, and my mom actually share the same birthday, so today's her fifty fifth. Oh, happy but, birthday um, to her too! How about that? I gotta call her. The pers- oh, yeah, she actually does. She she always says that you call her on a birthday cap. But um, so cute. <laughs> to put it in perspective, though, I guess which was interesting. Like, it's nice knowing that you know my mom turned fifty five and she like feels old or whatever. But um, you know, for me, like I have like a whole another of my lifetime till I get to that point. You know, so it's kind of like a cool perspective to think about like oh shit i'm getting old but like you know my mom has has experienced so much life and 55 like really isn't that old she still feels young so like it's nice to know that 25 years from now you know i'll still have like that kind of perspective on things that's sweet yeah that is so sweet that's that's adorable that's top that cap (laughs) (laughs) no that was uh that was nice you should He's got a really good relationship with his parents, so like they're they're just unbelievable people. But that's funny. Your mom said that, Laz. I, I didn't even like put two and two together, but yeah, I guess I just always forget that you and your mom have the same birthday, birthday, which is pretty cool. You do call. So her you wish them year. both a happy birthday, but you don't connect the two at all. Yeah, enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's spectacular. That is truly spectacular. I love that. I love like calling my friends' parents when it's their birthday. Like I'll just like barely like i'll send a bitmoji to my friend but like i'll like call their parents uh, singing happy birthday to them but when you get older you do realize that your friend's parents are just cooler than your friends like everyone tells like happy tells me that like everyone tells me that my parents are cooler than me so like it's one of those things specific parents specific i guess it depends like see like i wouldn't just like there's like some of my best friends parents i wouldn't call on their birthdays it just depends on like the relationship and like i know your parents they'd be like oh cappy's calling again like they were just typical like love it mm-hmm. like some people would be like why the fuck is cappy calling me like hey chris yeah. why is cappy calling me <laughs> like like something like that you know mm-hmm. i do feel like specifically jewish parents are usually in the cooler section of the parents for yeah. sure Stuff. but at the same time psychos in their own way well yeah of course. Like helicopter parent vibe you guys know like the uh, jewish helicopter okay. parents <laughs> we time. have them it's just erotic <laughs> Just pure neurosis. I think it comes from the Nova spread on their bagels. <laughs> I can see that. I don't, like you guys know, I don't know a ton about hockey. Are there a lot of Jewish hockey players? Um, Surprisingly, not as much as you would think. But at the same time, there is, um, I think the community is growing, in my opinion. Um, but from like a youth hockey and like a, that standpoint, I have a large per- portion of the Jewish community. But I feel like it, as it gets more competitive, that dies down a little bit, but I don't know why exactly that does. What do you I think? Mean, I mean, yeah, I, I think it dies down too. I mean, like our parents like stress education. So, you know, a lot of parents that don't know what hockey like is all about, I think, especially mine, like don't really understand junior hockey and how, like, how could you take off two years of school and like just play hockey? So like a lot of parents, I think pressure their kids to like, you know, maybe, Hey, like maybe you're not going to make it, you know, maybe it's best to go this route and get an education and do all that stuff. Cause like, I mean, the parents that don't know, like, it's a scary thing, like, to think about your kid just, like, moving to a random person's house in a random small city and, you know, wherever they play and, like, not do school, you know? Like, I mean, if I was a parent and I didn't know any better, like, I would probably say, hey, you sure you don't want to go to college, you know, get an education? Because it's not a guarantee that, like, you'll even end up playing D1 if you do that, you know? So it's like, 
I mean, just, just from my perspective, the parents that I've talked to, I, I remember when I was a senior in high school and I was telling like my friend's parents that I was moving to Texas to play hockey and they're like, Oh, like for school. And I was like, Nope, just going to go play. And they're like, your parents are letting you do that. You know? So, um, I guess that's why in a sense, but I mean, I would recommend it to anyone to go play junior hockey. Like it's the best. So the weird thing is like, I feel like in terms of that, like Jewish parents tend to be like more okay with their kids going away just because like Jews go to camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just a very Jew Jewish thing. I mean, Johnny, we went to the same brother, sister, called. Um, but like, yeah, like that's such a common thing to send their kids away for the whole summer, like seven and a half weeks, I think it was at Blue Ridge and Equinung. Um, but yeah, no, it's interesting to think about that mixed with like their perspective on sending them away for not school related things. I mean, Cappy's been doing it since he was like 15, right? How old were you? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. But I guess my parents were like the token Jewish parents that cared because I was like begging them to, I was like, guys, like I'm leaving at 15, like it's happening. <laughs> but I guess I'm also from Florida where back then you couldn't really, if you wanted to succeed in the sport, you had to leave at a certain age because it just wasn't competitive after that. Um, But yeah, just like what Johnny said with the whole college thing, like that was how it was from the get go with my family as well. It was more of just like, that's basically how it was from a young age. It was get an education because after playing hockey, you don't know what's going to happen, which is still the same thing today. Thankfully, I'm able to play pro and thankfully I could do this for a, long, a, a lengthy period of time, but who knows when that's all going to end. And thankfully I have an education to fall back on at the end of the day. See, something I'm also interested in, in terms of like being college athletes, since, I mean, we went to like big schools where Jewish people aren't necessarily the majority. So like not having like Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur off, what was that like? Like if you had practice or something where you just like, hey, like I got to fast all day if you observe, <laughs> like, you're like, I can't necessarily, you know, all this energy, right? Like, what was that like for you guys? I actually have a funny story. Yeah. Um, my my freshman year at Ferris, um, we had a our first intramural scrimmage. So basically, for the the listeners who don't know what an intramural scrimmage is, it's basically just a scrimmage between your your, your own team. You split up the team, and it's basically your first exhibition match before the season begins. So I believe it was what's the this is going to be sound terrible. What's the Jewish holiday? We just talked about this that you fast past is a Passover. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Did you say like Passover? <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah he I know. Don't even. Last don't even. Right. That's next week, though. We're not, know, profes but... we're not professional Jews, so we don't <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> so Yom Kippur. So it was Yom Kippur. And um, I actually was trying to fast. Like, I, I fasted the year before, and I really wanted to again. Um, just makes me feel like a better Jew. You know what I mean? So it happened to be on the same day as the, the hockey game. And I had to fast the first two periods. And I brought, like, a full-blown meal in, in the locker room. So, like, after those two periods... I was just slamming food. I had like chicken parm and everything like that to go out for the third period. So that was the only experience I ever had with it. But besides that, it's been pretty, pretty basic. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't have a story like that. I, I never really observed it. Um, I'm just not a good Jew, I guess, put it that way. <laughs> but, the, but, but on top of that, like other holidays, especially like Hanukkah and stuff like that, I've like, I was always able to. Um, like living in like the my apartments at college like I would get like a menorah and even though like my roommates weren't Jewish they would like love it and stuff like that so that was like that was pretty cool as well wholesome yeah that's right so wholesome. <laughs> most like your teammates own. love it when they find out you're Jewish or something like that they're just like oh that's great like mm. nobody's yeah yeah they want to learn more about it because they're so not used to it oh yeah some of the questions yeah. I've got it's unbelievable yeah it's crazy that's like, yes, how we celebrate Thanksgiving yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh I've been God. asked by people like to tell me like, Hey, can you say like, Hey, how are you in Hebrew? And I'm like, no, I don't no. know. That. No, <laughs> I can tell you, yeah, just show the prayers for you. You want me to, you want me to sing the five, the, the four questions? I'll sing the four yeah. questions for you right now. But yeah, but I can only do them singing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just like say Manish Jana, whatever. It's like exactly. you gotta sing it. You gotta sing it. It would be pretty, it would be pretty cool to speak fluent uh, Hebrew though. Yeah, that but that's not what Hebrew school teaches you. No, you guys I can like read Hebrew, but I just have no idea what it says. Like I can read it and make the sounds. And so I just, a lot of, and then after that, people are like, what does that mean? And I'm like, I just read it to you. Why don't you know what it means? Like I couldn't, yeah. <laughs> Hebrew school didn't extend that far for me. So no, it, just um, for me it was all it. memorization. Yeah, if I didn't, yep. if I wasn't able to memorize it. I would like put into like songs and like, even like my half tour, I would put in a little mix drive and 
it would it's all memory i was acting like i was reading it but i just fooled the whole entire people <laughs> yeah no like when i was studying for my bat mitzvah they just gave me a cd and they were like just memorize exactly. this just full so no, you seem surprised by that naomi i had to read that shit i had to read the whole thing <laughs> and struggle through it while everyone in my extended family was there watching me go hut 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 <laughs> <laughs> See, I actually almost didn't get bat mitzvahed because I hated Hebrew school and I never went. And then they were just like, Rachel, I've been in Hebrew school for like six months. Your bat mitzvah's in two months. How are you going to do this? And I did it. I goddamn did it. it I fucking away. sat there and just, I, it's still drilled into my head, honestly. Like I can still remember some of my Torah portion. Like it's also a weird Torah Thanks. portion. Like some of them is just like, what are you supposed to learn from this? Like, what what's the takeaway here? Because you know, at the end of your bar bat mitzvah, you're supposed to like talk about your Torah portion. And I just remember mine. I was just like, there's no good message here. There really is none. Like mine was about the um, Korah saying like Moses, you're not as holy as you think you are, and then Moses snitched and God got pissed, and then all of Korah and his followers either got killed by fire or swallowed by the earth and i was like what message do i take away from this like you lost don't me. speak up <laughs> <laughs> don't snap. I, I didn't even get a lick of my half toy portion <laughs> or what it means um but hey it's all right i was a good jew no, i am it's a fine. good jew no. <laughs> yeah at least you observe young kapoor on like um mr lazarus over here i'll try next time but <laughs> when, I, when I was playing hockey you bet your ass i was eating food yeah. <laughs> that's fair that's fair you know what i was that's wondering? completely fair i remember growing up that i missed a lot of hebrew school which was always on sundays because i had soccer practice or soccer games and that it really really upset my family did you guys ever have an experience like that where you just like missed a lot of jewish holidays jewish occasions or whatever because you were like had youth sports growing up and you know, like a lot of your friends weren't doing that or like teammates I, mean, I, I missed like countless even even like mother's days you know like those were always tough because me and my dad would always be on the road for hockey and like my mom would just be back with my sister or whatever but yeah i mean we, we miss a lot of shit like not even not even just holidays too like you miss out on like you know like the spring breaks with your friends and then like even you know some people miss prom like i had a friend who had a ushl tryout the weekend of prom and he went and he didn't even make the team which is like insanely you know that sucks but like that's what you have to do. Like you know, it's just a sacrifice that we all have to make. What's prom? Is that a thing? No, I'm just. I've, <laughs> oh yeah, I've missed countless, countless yeah. events. Not 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 even just Jewish holidays. Um, just like Laz said, just from like my parents traveling, my dad traveling. I didn't realize like how much they did honestly till like later in my life. You you really don't realize how much money they spent on like the journey and everything like that. I mean, just living in Florida, we traveled at least once a month out of state to play like the top competitive teams and just to just to get our name out there, get our team out there. And I'm like looking back like a couple of years ago, I'm just like, shit, they must have spent so much money just on this whole entire process, which is pretty remarkable to think about. But yeah, it definitely sucks. I wasn't able to graduate with my some of my best friends back in Florida. I mean, I missed a lot prom for sure. Everything like that. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a lot for sure. Yeah. But even like, like, as Aaron, like, think about how, like, our parents, like, you know, work a nine to five job and then they would come home and, like, get us ready for practice, go sit at the rink for two hours, oh. and their, their, their night ends at, like, 9 30. It's like, dude, being a parent sounds fucking nuts. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> up at, like, 4 a.m. for yeah, the ice like, time. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, that was awful. <laughs> that was so bad. That was really bad. Yeah, I remember that I played in this uh, soccer league where, like, we went like you said, out of state probably every two weeks. And we played in like a national league. So we go out to like Vegas or like Texas, California, all these different places to play. And it's like, I'm in DC. That's not close. <laughs> so, you know, you're counting flights, you're counting hotel rooms, all that stuff. And like the amount of money and time that my parents put in, like, I don't really think I fully appreciated that until I started thinking about being a tiger parent for my own child when they inevitably play soccer because then I can like live vicariously through them. Of course. And like how much money and time I'm going to put in in my future. And I think that clicked like the other day when I was thinking about all of my eggs dying and like having to lose soon. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, just shutting down. You're, you're you not can't really even relate, 23. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really relate to that, but 
yeah, yeah. Just, oh, just the girly things. <laughs> it was just a TED talk. It was just a TED talk. Mm. It's not just an the girly things. You know, <laughs> worrying about your eggs dying. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Yeah, right. Being a girl is just fantastic. Which great segue. NCAA absolutely screwing over women's basketball. That was crazy. Like, mm. I just don't understand how that got through so many, like, levels of processing without anyone just being like, we're going to get a lot of shit for this. This is not going to look good for us. And yet they still did it anyway. I honestly don't think they gave it a second thought. I don't think uh-huh. they were like, this could look bad. They were just like, this is what they get. And then I don't think they turned back and it's- it Sucks it's to only, suck. Yeah, it's not only just from the equipment, but did you see posts about, like, the food that they were getting and- um the yeah. swag that they got as well it was like I don't know if you guys heard about this um but just the discrepancies and, and the items that they got like I guess the the women's team got like two shirts and like a water bottle and the men's team had like this spread of like this array of items uh, that they got from the NCAA it was, it was pretty messed up I didn't even I, I to be honest see, see what happened but I, I've seen it happen before and um it's crazy it even happens in women's in women's hockey it's it's nuts even like college hockey in general, I always talk to a lot Johnny about it. Just like the fact that it's not promoted more on on, te- on televised, and, and more specifically women's in, in USA and women's soccer and everything like that. It's it's yeah, not like, how they're treated sometimes. They didn't even do the women's World Juniors this year. Yeah, they I just know. Said, Screw you guys. We're just doing the men's. <laughs> which okay. which is I'm gonna be which, honest. I didn't know they. Ha- I didn't even know they had a women's World Juniors. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had no idea they did that. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah, and USA has done really, really well in juniors for the women's. They've they've won gold so many times, and like you said, like it's so under like covered that you didn't mm-hmm. even know that it existed. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea. I thought Especially it was like U eighteen. I didn't know it was World Junior. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It really, really is. But also, like the final four in general been problematic just as a whole like I had the very unfortunate experience of working during the final four for the NCAA and it was just a disaster it was horrible they didn't pay for our parking they didn't give us food I worked an eight hour shift and I didn't have a single piece of food like I had to pay $35 for a crappy like stadium burger because of course the price was so inflated like it was crazy. Like even the like Frozen Four, like they have much less money than the Final Four, but they treated the people working for them much better. Had a much better experience working at the Frozen Four than the Final Four. It was crazy. It really was. You see, my main regret about the Final Four was for whatever reason they trusted me to like lock up. And I was like, with the arena, okay. Um, I was just just some like random kid from the college that they had no idea who she was and they were just like yeah Rachel you'll lock up and I was like what Mm -hmm. Um, and they made me change my shirt in like a crowded room which was really uncomfortable Um, because I wasn't wearing the PR team shirt Mm -hmm. even though I was wearing the shirt that they gave us Um, so they made me change shirts in the middle of a room and they just had like these boxes of like the, the shirts that I had to change into that were just like sitting there. They weren't going anywhere. So like my only regret was only stealing three of those shirts instead of like all of them. <laughs> um, you know, I shoved what I could in my bag, but there was only so much. I mean, yeah, I, 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 uh, I never got to work a Final Four or Frozen Four, but uh, I imagine that you should be treated better than that. Right. Yeah, the Frozen Four, again, Frozen Four, way less funds, way less funds, but they treated us so much better. Like, I had a great time working the Frozen Four. It was so much fun. I got to heckle the on the bench guys who I actually don't like, and I find them very annoying. And they were just awful. <laughs> this was hilarious, though. I was like working at like this like mini game, and it was like hardest slap shot, whatever. Mm-hmm. And these, these, these dusters are getting like a 30 mile per hour slap shot. And they're like, you and your like, like my friend who was doing like the, the speed thingy, the speed gun, they were like, you're doing it wrong. And I was like, and I had a full leg brace on because I was about to get my second knee surgery. And I just grabbed the stick, ripped like a 70 mile per hour slap shot. I'm like, 
you guys just suck. Like, you, had, you had a 70 mile per hour slap shot? It's pretty intense. I want, I want video yeah. proof. I was just mad. I was just really mad at them. I was just pissed mm -hmm. off. And I was just like, that's uh, great. Yeah. You said, sorry, you said the, um, the, your final four experience was bad, but the frozen four experience was good, right? Yes. Okay. Good. I was going to say, like, you made me feel better that I didn't make it to the frozen four or the national championship anytime. But then again, <laughs> you said it was good. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Especially because, like, they gave us press passes, which they also did for the final four but we weren't allowed to go see the games in the final four. Like we weren't allowed to use those press passes to go see the games where oh, we were just like, that makes the no point sense. of giving us press passes. Yeah. Then. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to use my press pass for every single game for the frozen four. Which my, is what you should, which is what should happen. My question is what's like a good average speed for a slap shot? Because I don't know. Like, well, if it's men or women, it depends. Okay. Either. Um, I mean, like, are you saying like in the professional level or like the yeah, college yeah, level or either professional? Awesome. Professional would be I mean, fine. Cappy, you might know more than me because you have to stop them. Yeah, you're the one that yeah. jumps in front of um, them. Um, like a professional point, I would say like anywhere from like 85 to even like probably up to 100. I mean, there's guys in the NHL that are shooting 100 and above slap shots, which is um pretty crazy to even think about that I got to stand in front of some of this, some of that some of that shit. But uh, yeah. Everybody, I mean, even Johnny, if he were to, he hasn't hopped on the, actually, I mean, when's the last time you hopped on the ice? You, you've been, like, you say competitively play? No, 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 no. Just like in general. Um, Dude, I've skated like once since my last college game. Okay. Well, even so, <laughs> even so, last could come on the ice and take a, a well, yeah, step. I could still snipe yeah. you. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, like, he could still, no, I'm saying from a slap shot standpoint, I'm saying you could still put up a 70 mile per hour slap shot just because you're used to it. I had a yeah. decently hard shot, I would say. I, mean, I think you um, could do a little harder just because you're tall. Not as strong as I was, though, when I was yeah. playing. I've lost it a little bit. I let myself go. It's okay. We all do. You mm. know, but I see you grinding in retro. I see you. I, I, see you. I got a head there right after this. I need to get, I, I had like three pieces of birthday cake last night. I got to go run it off. I was going to go, but then I was like, nah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, I just got a thing about us running out of time in 10 minutes. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I, see that. Awesome. I don't know if you guys see that. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going to upgrade, so. No, you're good. 10 minutes. No money, no money, no money. No, We're we stingy with our money here. I mean, <laughs> checks out. Um, I'm, like, very impressed that you are a goalie, Justin, because I was a goalie for soccer, and it always kind of, I mean, like, you can't be afraid of the ball. It's, like, you know, a similar thing, but I just couldn't imagine it being smaller and harder. Like, that just doesn't sound like a fun time for me. It's very impressive. Oh, no. I'm actually impressed with with soccer goalies, to be honest with you. Like, I tried to play soccer, and I first off, I'm terrible. I don't know if it's the footwork or what it is. And then I was also just like, yeah, like I, I'm good at hockey. Like not, uh, not to. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I knew I was waiting for. I'm just looking right at Johnny. Like, no, right you're good. Like, you're good. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm good at hockey. Maybe, like, <laughs> oh yeah, sure, it'll translate to soccer. Yeah, it's just a bigger net and a ball. But yeah, I'm so bad at soccer. So I'm definitely impressed with the with you guys as well. But I can't. Um, I so I, I think it takes a different. It takes a different and unique breed of people to want to stop an object from being thrown or kicked or shot or do anything at you so you and i think it's sorry and i think it's the most pressure filled and anxiety filled position in any in basically any sport but like just like it's just like a pitcher in baseball it's just like a quarterback in, in football yeah. um so yeah have you found that all like hockey goalies are a little bit crazy because i definitely know that like in my experience as a keeper, like all the girls I knew who were goalies are like just a little bit off, like not necessarily in a bad way. It's just like, you have to be a certain type of weird to like want to put yourself in that position. And I was curious if yeah. that translated to hockey. Um, I mean, I do definitely see it for sure, but I've been told I'm one of the normal goalies like he around, is. which is pretty, yeah. Like you, I mean, I'll, give him that, I'll give him that credit. He is. Thank you. Like there's just a lot of, and, and I see it all the time. Like I meet, I meet goalies all the time. I meet like i've been on a variety of teams and i'm like man this kid is just a weirdo i, I love him but like this kid is and then i think like and, and that's the first thing you hear about it's like you walk up oh you play hockey with position goalie oh you're a goalie mm -hmm. something's <laughs> gotta be wrong with you. something's gotta be wrong with you so but no i think my cork is or like quirk what is it quirk? quirk 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 i think my quirk is that 
I'm Jewish. That's my weird <laughs> thing about me. I'm a goalie. I'm a Jewish goalie. There you go. <laughs> And apparently normal. I mean, hockey players in general tend to be a little weird, <laughs> definitely different than the normal standard of weird. But yeah, goalies definitely take it to a new level. I've never met a like normal goalie before. Until now. <laughs> Until now. Yeah. <laughs> I like definitely have not been told that I'm a normal goalie. So <laughs> I just <laughs> can confirm on that one. Yeah, I've gotten that. Um, when you were talking about how it's like the hardest position, I like definitely vibe with that because I feel like, at least in soccer, like when you make a mistake, it's a huge deal. But when you make an incredible save, sometimes they won't even replay it. It's like you make the best save you've ever made, and it just doesn't matter if you make a single mistake. That's like the end of the game, and your team could lose. Because I mean, I don't know how hockey is, but I feel like it's a low-scoring sport. Like you're not going to get that many goals. So like one goal can be the difference between a win and a loss, right? So yeah. Definitely very similar to soccer and yeah, definitely the most pressure filled uh, position in, in, in most sports. It's, it's pretty remarkable. And honestly, I feel for like my parents in another aspect too, from that standpoint, like I'm always like, man, just growing up, my parents were, or at least my dad was just such a crazy hockey parent, hockey goalie dad in the stands. Like if I let up a goal, he's, I'm looking right at him and he's making the exact save that I should have made in this. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but, but I'm, it's gotta look at it from their standpoint if if i play a great game everyone's all oh, going up to him justin played phenomenal tonight blah 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 but then if i'm shit it's like they don't even want to be there it's like get yeah. out like mm-hmm. get out of the locker room let's go home like you're done like <laughs> also gotta be I still go, for the parents. And, and just to clarify what'd you say i'm sorry no it's got to be stressful for the parents watching their child just get like bombarded by these things that could break his face easily yeah like, yeah well i mean and just to clarify i'm 25 years old and i still like dread calling my dad after bad games because i know i'm gonna get shredded but that's what happens that's you, gotta love it. you gotta love it though too because then when at the end of the day when that doesn't happen and your hockey career is over you're gonna miss it <laughs> yeah totally true totally my my dad played college basketball and really did not know very much about soccer um and still does that <laughs> like I'd have a bad game and he'd be like you should have done this I'm like that's not even what I did wrong like that's you don't even know what you're talking about so did both dad, your parents play hockey my dad was a track runner has never played <laughs> hockey. Like, <laughs> not a goalie nothing so yeah that's right yeah, that was like oh. when I would be like skating my dad would be in the stands just watching me and then I'd come off the ice and he was like you're doing that wrong I'm like you don't even know how to ice skate you don't even know how to stand on ice skates without like holding on to the rail or me like shut up <laughs> and I know he's listening was too. right now too <laughs> exactly how it is. <laughs> sorry dad yeah yeah sorry Back, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry dad but not really this is the second time in a row i've called him out this because <laughs> you know the last one it was that will ferrell stuff, <laughs> what will ferrell like stuff? so naomi was talking about how she likes will ferrell but my dad has this like weirdly staunch stance against him but like has all these exceptions for movies of, of his that he likes so i'm like it kind of sounds like you like will ferrell mm-hmm. and he's just like no i don't like will ferrell Blaze of Glory is one of the greatest movies of all time. 10 out of 10. It is, yeah. 10 out of 10 movie. Yeah. I love that movie so much. For like our last um, podcast, we had Eliana, who used to be like a Team USA ice dancer. And I was asking her if she thought there could ever be like a man-man duo. And she said no. So. I would love to see that though. Oh, I'm, I, could, I would say, she said no. I'd say, don't be surprised. You've, you have you never know in this world. Like, you I know, mean, she gave a valid reason. Like, Especially with like the women, women thing, like it's like obviously the men are stronger and it's already hard enough to lift a woman, but like, shut up, let yeah. me dream. I just want to see it come to life. Like, Naomi, we're gonna do this, we're gonna choreograph. Our I own. can't even ice skate, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just be like dragging behind me, just on the floor, face down, just holding on to like the back of my skate. It's fine, mm. that's Iron Lotus. Yes, yeah, exactly. I promise I won't chop off your head. I promise. I promise. And then at the last second, like you hurt your ankle and I have to do it and we go in in reverse and it's just Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can watch that movie tonight. This is what this has done to me. Anyway, the best movie soundtracks. Great soundtrack. Yeah, True. it is. On Aerosmith too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're kind of running out of time here. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
Um, but Rachel, did you have any like closing questions for the review? Uh, no, I mean, I guess just like, you guys are killing it. I guess my only question is, you know, how did you come up with the locker room? Johnny? You, dude. You got it. Um, I just honestly, just what one day just like woke up and I mean, I always listen to a lot of podcasts, just like part of my take, a lot of barstool stuff. And was just like every podcast really has like a niche and just has like something they just like really like start take to start it up. So just like basically um, wanted to just incorporate Judaism in the podcast and just start interviewing, I guess, famous Jewish people. And then um, immediately called Johnny um, and without just like not even like a minute into the conversation, Johnny was like, I'm in like, say less, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then um, Johnny took on, took on a lot of like the load of work and just like, it just basically blew up from there. We started getting, uh, then we got our producer Max involved and Max has been an absolute rock. He's done so much as well. And it basically just, it just continued to, I guess, evolve into, into, um, well, the original idea was Jewish athletes, and we were like, dude, that's yeah. kind of there's not enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then that was our original people, idea. And then know. it like expanded into just like kind of, you know, anyone in any specific. Oh, that's awesome. You guys are killing it. Well, thank you guys for supporting it. We appreciate it. We see and it. So thank you for you. supporting us, too. I mean, yeah. us and our 18 followers. 18 It'll get up. It'll get up. I know two more from last week. Incredible. Hey, it's not about where you start, it's about where you finish. Exactly. exactly. Right, right. Well, well yeah. Thank you guys so much, and happy thank you guys, birthday, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, locker room comes out on Wednesdays, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know it. Oh, yeah. Right. Later, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. So cute. <laughs>